dealing with <clears throat> the Aliyah Shvi of Parshas Bo. And the end of the Parsha, the very last Pasuk, is concerned with a time when you'll be asked, you'll be asked, Vayaki Shalcha Bincha Machal when you'll be asked by your children, what is this, what is it all we're doing Jewishly? And you'll tell them about the Chosek Yad, Mimitraim, and it continues with the very last possible, the mitzvah of wearing tefillin on one's arm and on one's head. Why? For with a strong hand, did HaKadosh Baruch Hu, did Hashem take us out of Mitzrayim? This last posuk, this last posuk, is a posuk that I said, you can't leave this last posuk and the long Ramban on this posuk. You can't leave Yeshiva without knowing this inside and out. And indeed, I would say that in the same way the Ramban writes his son this letter when he's in Israel, and he'll probably never see his son again, and in fact he doesn't, and he says, uh, he writes him a, uh, a letter about how he should conduct himself in life, and he tells him, you must read this every week. And I would say, <laughs> we have to read this Ramban at least every week. We have to have this Ramban in mind whenever we do put on tefillin, whenever indeed, whenever we do a mitzvah, and whenever we daven. Shachras, mincha, emayr. Why have I made such a a whole statement, a far-reaching statement. Because as we've been speaking in the last few weeks in Shri about Parshas Shmos, Parshas v- v- and Parshas Vo'era, and now Parshas Bo, the whole trial or issue in a certain sense of going out of Mitzrayim is that Paro, and the Jewish people, indeed, should know that I am God, should know that I am Bekerev Haaretz, that I am not a distant, a God of inference, but rather I'm a God of concern and presence. And that is the meaning out of going out of Egypt. It's the meaning of, indeed, the Torah, the knowing of God, not as merely intellectual exercise, not merely as a disembodied truth, but as a present and almost palpable reality in life. And the problem is, the problem is in the the, uh, world of Laman Teida, that which we should know and we say we do know, but practically speaking, as the Mesilat Yisharim points out at the very beginning of his Sefer, Ramchal, the author, points out that forgetting is the widespread reality of all of life. We forget the important things. Everything that we needed to learn, this is not the Ramchal himself, but everything we needed to, to know, we know we're supposed to be good, we know we're supposed to do the right thing, we know we're supposed to be, and so on and so forth. We know all those things, but in day-to-day life, it's filed away someplace, and we're not interested in books that tell us, be good, do right, because there's nothing new in being told that we've heard that. But the question is, we need to be reminded such that we keep that front and center in everything we do, rather than push it to the back in which we don't really forget it. And on the other hand, we live with forgetting it. So that stira, that contradiction in life, we, we live... By, for example, I'll give you an example. The example is, and I've often asked this question, 
People daven three times a day and they say that we thank God for the nisim that God has done for us. The nisim, the niflaot, the miracles and the wonders that God has done for us. The chol yom, erev, avokav, it's orayim. Three times a day we say this and we recognize that we have been dealt with in, in so I ask people, well, what miracle has happened to you today? What miracle? What wondrous thing has happened to you today? Right? Indeed, if somebody came along and stopped us in the street and said, do you see? Do you see my hand? I can, I can move my fingers. Oh, we would say, very nice, very nice young man. Right? We would wonder what... What that's, I would used to say what what illegal substance, but it's becoming more and more legal. But what substance they really they've recently used, such that they're wondering about the movement of their the fingers of their hand, and this is what happens. We're supposed to put on tefillin every day. We're supposed to daven every day. We're supposed to do this mitzvah and that mitzvah. And we shouldn't do this. And we have to, even though we'd like to do it, we shouldn't do it, right? All of that. But why do we forget? We forget because, as Chazal say, if you want to be in awe of God, what does God ask for you? He asks only ma. What? Maya. A hundred. A hundred brachos. Do we make brachos every time we're supposed to make brachos? We're asked to make brachos? Or do we take what we have for granted rather than with gratitude. That's the forgetting. The forgetting is that what we should be taking with gratitude, which is the nature of all brachot in one way or another, we skip. And even if we say the bracha, it's rote, because we're essentially taking the apple that we ate or getting up in the morning, we're taking it for granted. Uh, indeed, forgetfulness is the current of life. Erev, Avokev, it's a right. And so, what do we learn from the Ramban? And why is the Ramban so important? Because the Ramban is explaining, Laman Teida, that Hashem is the creator and the one who continues to create. And therefore, there's nothing to take for granted. It's always wonder. Liolam Hashem Dvarcha Nitzav Bashamayim Hamachadish Betuva we say in Davin God renews in His goodness echoing creation itself Vayalukim Kitov Vayalukim Kitov that's Tovness that goodness is constantly constantly being pulsed into creation by the creative will of God and we say the words. And this is, this is what the Ramban tells us. The Ramban tells us, and I'm reading from the Ramban, that the Ramban says that he kavanata yitzira, right? The in, intent of creation is kavanat kol ha-mitzvot shenamin belokeinu that we should know that God created us and we should give thanks to God for this. That's the meaning creation. That you should know and this knowledge be translated into the love of God, into the into the Yada in Hebrew also means love of God, which we express through gratitude. And then he talks about prayer. The Ramban goes on. The Kavanat Takol Bitfilot. The Kavanat Bateyaknesiot. Why do we daven out loud? I remember that I came I came um, I came back to American davening in a shul and I uh, hadn't been in America in a long time, and I said some words out loud, and somebody turned around and shushed me. 
And I wasn't shouting, as the Ramban seems to say, the meaning of the Beit Knesset and the meaning of the gathering is Sheyit Kapsu, that people should join together Viodu and they should give thanks Lekel Shbraam in Siam Viyafarsamuza to God. We give thanks who created us and sustains us. And we should publicize this and say, live for love and say before God, we are your creatures, God. And this is, this is the whole meaning of tefillah. And the Ramban goes on, and indeed I use the word famously to say, that from the great Nisim that we experience, the Nisim of going out of Mitzrayim, from the fact that God does intervene in nature. We understand that everything is miracle. The only difference is there are miracles that we call great and before some, right? Then Adam Modeh, then a person will admit and give thanks. Benisim Hasnistarim Shem Yisoda Tarakula in the hidden Nisim. They are the foundation of all of Torah. A person has no portion in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything is nice. You can take nothing for granted. Nothing is the iron chains of necessity, even in the natural world. There is no min hago shobalom. Right? And that is, that is the fundamental basis of what we were to learn in Mitzrayim and what we are to express every, every day. Briotecha, briotecha anachnu. I remember that long, long ago, oh, maybe 30, 35 years ago, in the Sidra, in the order of, in Shivat Miftar, when I used to give for Hanukkah, always four sichot corresponding to the Arba Goliot, the four exiles that are, that, that are dealt with, in which Galut Yavan is one of the exiles, the exile of Yavan and the challenge of Greek philosophy and the modern world and so on and so forth. So I quoted a Gemara in Tanis in which Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa's daughter, that she makes a mistake and she lights the candles with uh, with vinegar, oh, she says they're not going to burn. And and uh, what will be? Rochanina then Dosa says to her, "Mi shama le shemen liadlik, the one who created, who said to Shem, Yomer Lokim, Shemen, you become fuel, you produce fire. When you meet the fire, you will burn. Who Yomer? Who he? He God." Well, can say to chometz to vinegar to also burn. And it, the Mera says in Tainus that the, the candles did indeed burn and burn through all of Shabbos. And I said, this actually it occurred to me that this actually answers a well-known question of Beis Yosef. Why do we have eight days of Hanukkah, right? The first day they had enough for anyway, right? So what was the miracle? That it burned all, let's say it burned all day the first day, but it had enough oil for the first day. Right? I said the first day is the miracle, the ultimate miracle of Hanukkah is that all of nature, the very fact that oil burns, that too is a miracle. And yesterday, yesterday night, I saw this in the name of Ramosha Feinstein. And I was greatly, <laughs> greatly joyous. And I thought to myself, no, that's the difference between my, my life, sorry for getting personal here, in scholarship. As I recall scholarship, whether it was in sociology or in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Jewish academia, uh, people would say something and then somebody would come along and say, somebody else said it, and then they have to, or somebody else said, I said it, you know, and then they and then they'd say, no, you have to show how the person who supposedly originally said it didn't say it completely as well or as fully or as 
you know, as deeply as I said it, and it becomes an argument about, you know, chas v'shalom, it shouldn't be my chidush. It shouldn't be what, God forbid, it not be attributed to me, you know. And uh, in learning, in Torah, there's nothing that makes a person happier is, is than, than saying something and then realizing, my goodness, it's a Sosa Choshen, it's a Reb Chaim, the Ramban said it, Reb Moshe said it. So I was joyous, and I, even though it's not Hanukkah now, but Hanukkah in the, in the Surah of the Ramban, and you can see the Ramban in Baaloscha, again, is, is about Briosecha, Nachnu, is about the joy, the joy of living in a world in which we are blessed with understanding the the, the mitzvah we get for saying a bracha, when we should, in any case, always say brachas to express gratitude.